Hello, welcome to Lesson 2 of Mastering Java Volume 2 here. Uh, in this lesson we're going to continue learning about reading keyboard input. We're going to be using the same system.n.read method we were using in the last section, but if you remember I told you there was a couple of gotchas. And here I really need to go over those so that you won't get frustrated down the road. So first we need to have the throws statement, java.io.io .io exception exception like this and that's just because of the error handling in Java we talked about that before and now we're free to continue on let's start first of all by reading a single character in and then I'll show you uh, these gotchas along the way so let's define a character call it input right and then let's go ahead and accept some some input from the keyboard so first let's print something to the screen to indicate to the user uh, to type something in so let's do an out print ln like this and then we will say enter any key then press enter so we'll do like this press any key then press enter something like that we need to obviously put this in quotations so I'll put a quotation put a space we'll put, do this like a space like this and then at the end of the line we're going to have a semicolon. All right, so this is just an output guy. And if you want to run that, you can see that that's going to put this on the screen. Of course, it doesn't do any input yet until we actually collect the input. So we'll say input equals, uh, and then we need to cast it to a character because everything's read in as an integer. So it'll be system.in.read like this. Now, this is going to take the input from the keyboard. Now, let's go ahead down here and let's uh, put. Um, another output system dot out dot print ln you entered the key and we'll do a plus input so all of this stuff that we've done here is stuff we've done before all we're doing is we're putting a message reading an input as a character and then we're just putting it out to the screen so let's go ahead and uh, hit this guy here we can do a, a lowercase y and then it'll say you entered the key y that behaves exactly as we suspected now let me show you something though right what if we want to do this twice what if we want to get the user to press uh, to enter a key and then put some other text on the screen and then enter another key maybe we want to have two different keyboard inputs from the user so uh, what we're going to do after that after we enter this guy we might then put uh, system dot out dot print ln right let's put some more text press any second key so this is the prompt for the user to go ahead and press another key so what do you think we should do well we've already stored the first input on, into this variable and we've put it to the screen so we can just collect the second input right so actually it's an exact copy of this statement here so we can just uh, copy this guy just copy we can drop it down there and paste it. It's the same thing as typing it in again. Essentially, we're collecting another system.in.read, casting it as a character, and then we want to go ahead and print that out to the screen. So we can save a little time by copying this guy, which is just basically putting to the screen exactly what uh, we input there. So let me pull this up here, and uh, let's do this. Your second key was... All right, so study this for a second and make sure that you agree that you think it's going to work. Basically, we're going to enter a key, collect it, put it to the screen, and then we have another message, enter a second key, and actually I'm going to skip a, a line down, backslash n to push it down. Then we're going to collect that second input and we're going to put it to the screen. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and save it. Let's go ahead and run it. Press any key, then enter. So I'm going to put a Y and I'm going to hit enter and watch carefully what happens after I press enter. So what it says is you entered the key Y, then immediately it says press any second key, and it doesn't even really wait. It says your second key was, and, and it's basically blank. This is not how we expected the program to, to flow, because we think that when we get, get to this step, system.in.read, the system will stop and wait for a keyboard input, then we print it to the screen, then we say, hey, press a second key, then we expect this to pause the input again and say, wait for another keyboard, and then another keyboard entry, and then we'll put it out to the screen. 
But that isn't what happens. As soon as we get to this guy, it seems to, pr to print these to the screen without really waiting for our second user input. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about when you have a gotcha here. It's something that you need to know how the, the thing actually works. The bottom line is the system.in.read command uh, or, or, or input method, it basically reads one byte from the keyboard, right? But the thing is, or one character from the keyboard, but the thing is, is that it's the the method is what we call line buffered and what that means is that basically when you type the y let me run it again notice nothing happens you can put the letter u nothing happens until i actually press enter when i press enter then it sends whatever i typed into the keyboard into my program and then it go it continues on but it only actually sends it to the program whenever i press enter and also, um, this system.in.read, it only reads one character, also known as a byte, one byte at a time. So when we enter the U and we, and we hit int, press the enter key, and then this read command reads the, the letter U, then we print it to the screen. But here's the, the real gotcha here. If you remember this table right here, this is the ASCII character table. So for instance, if we enter the letter lowercase u like we just did, then it uh, corresponds to a value of 117. But what you need to know about keyboard input is when it's line buffered like that, what that means is you type a bunch of stuff into the keyboard, it goes into a temporary memory area, and then when you hit the enter key, everything gets passed to your program. All right. But look over here on the left hand side. See, we have all of these keyboard uh, symbols here, but on the left hand side, we have all of these like invisible things like tab, line feed, form feed, carriage return. There's a lot of other things here and they all have corresponding ASCII codes. So whenever you actually hit enter, whenever you type the, the letter U and hit enter, what you really are sending your program is the letter U, but because it's line buffered, at the end of the line you always get a carriage return, right? And you also get a line feed. The carriage return is when the cursor goes back to the beginning of the line. Like if this if this were my line here and I get a carriage return, that sends it to the beginning of the line. And you also get a line feed that pushes that pushes the text up a little bit like this. So you got to think back to the to the old uh, days here. Like here's this is some of the exercises we're going to be doing here uh, in a minute over here. I've got them in Notepad, but basically you can think of let me go and scroll it off the screen. If I enter the letter U and then hit enter, notice how when I hit enter, it go, the cursor goes back to the beginning of the line and it skips down a line. So going back to the beginning of the line is the carriage return. The line feed is pushing it, the cursor down to the next line. So the bottom line is whenever you hit the letter U and press enter, you're getting the letter U, which corresponds to 117 sent to the program, but you're also getting this invisible carriage return, which is decimal or integer 13, you're also getting a line feed, which is another character, which is invisible. So they're non-printable, but they're in the input stream, right? So then the bottom line is when you get down to your second part here, the second system.in.read, it goes into that little buffer area of memory to see what's in the keyboard buffer, and it sees that there's still a carriage return and there's still a line feed in there. So it doesn't wait for another enter. It sees that there's something already in memory waiting to be read and it reads it in. So it reads this invisible carriage return and then it prints an invisible carriage return uh, right here. So that is why Java, uh, the, the default way of doing this here, the easiest way to do, do this here with system.in.read is very nice if you're just reading one character, but it's got some gotchas because if you try to do two sequential reads, basically these invisible characters at the end of the, of the keyboard buffer cause problems. So the way you get around it, that's really all we care about is after we read the first letter here, this one right here, we need to do a couple of more reads. So let me go ahead and copy this. I'm going to do control C copy. I'm going to do a paste here and I'm going to do a paste here. What we're doing here by inserting these guys is we're reading those two invisible uh, items, the carriage return and the line feed. And we are basically uh, reading them and discarding them. So what's going to happen here is we're going to read the first character. We're going to print it to the screen. The carriage return, the line feed is still in the input buffer. We're going to read the first one, discard it because we're not doing anything with it. We're going to read the second, discard it because we're not doing anything with it. Now the buffer is empty so that when we get to our next read, it's actually going to pause and wait for us to type something. So let's go ahead and save this 
and hit enter. So our first guy is a U. Now we'll hit enter and notice that it says you type the key U and it's waiting for another input. That's because these two reads right here emptied out our buffer of the carriage return and the line feed, those invisible characters there. And now because it's empty, then when we get to this read down here, it waits for us. So let's go ahead and type a J and then it says your second key was J. That's really what you need to know about using system.n.read. If you're gonna read single characters, uh, in like this, then um, then you need to, after each read, then you need to kind of do two dummy reads like this to get it primed and ready for the next one like that. Now notice after this read right here, there's still another carriage return in the line feed from my second entry, but I don't do anything with it because I don't, I don't care. My program's done. If I were going to do a, another keyboard input, I'd have to paste two more of these guys to kind of clear the buffer and, and so on. And, you know, along these lines, you can do some other interesting things as well. So this works fine if I'm going to do single character input. But what if I accidentally type in two characters? What if it's an accident? What if I type instead of a R, I put R and a T? So here I've put two characters in the buffer. Plus, when I hit enter, I'm going to get a carriage return and a line feed. Then what's going to happen is, again, it's not going to wait for me because this read reads the R in. This dummy read is going to read the T in. This dummy read is going to read the carriage return, which is invisible. And then when we get to this one, it's just going to read the line feed, which is invisible at the end as well. So if I accidentally enter more than one guy uh, there, if I have two characters there, then I can just insert a third dummy read and everything should be okay. So if I do T then U, then the program should behave properly. Notice that it uh, tells me that I entered a T because it's only reading the first guy there, the first byte, and if I have an E, let's say, then my second character was E. So, you know, a lot of this stuff in uh, Java is stuff that you're going to use here in the beginning. You know, we're doing these early programs. Um, you're not going to use them a lot when we get to more complicated programs because there are more powerful and more robust ways to read keyboard input in Java, and we're going to get to those very soon. But I just wanted to make sure you understand this gotcha because it's very common for you to take a keyboard entry, a single character, do something with it, and then try to read a second input from the user. And if you don't know to, to do two dummy reads right here to get rid of the invisible carriage return and line feed, um, then you're just going to be beating your head against the wall for no reason. And that's because of the way it handles it. It's line buffered. When you press enter, you get a carriage return and line feed that are waiting there. If you don't read them and discard them, then when you get down to your next read, uh, Java is going to be reading those guys uh, in there. One more thing I'm going to do here before I close is I want to, you know, I, I don't want to uh, kind of uh, flog you know this this into the ground but I think it's really interesting to understand how all this works so what I want to do is notice we're reading our first input and then we're reading the carriage return in the line feed and throwing them away and then we're reading our second input let's go ahead and print out the ASCII codes for these invisible characters just to convince yourself that that's actually what's happening so what I'm going to do to show you how to do that is I'm going to declare an integer uh, called input 2 input 2 and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read these dummy characters into the variable input2, but because I'm reading them in as integers, I don't need to cast them as characters. So essentially what's going on is I'm reading the first character that you input as a character and printing it out, and then I'm reading the two dummy characters, carriage return and line feed, but since I've declared this as an integer, remember I said system.n.read always reads everything in as an integer, so I'm going to put that into a variable uh, and I want to print the ASCII code out. And if I've done everything right, then I should see some of these codes over here, uh, you know, that would correspond to what I've been telling you here. So after the first read, let's do system.out.println. And let's do invisible character like this. And we'll do input2. And then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit copy. Command C or Control C, and then after the second one, I'm going to print the same thing back. So when we read our first dummy, we should see the code that corresponds, the ASCII code that corresponds to it. We read the second dummy in, we should see the invisible code that corresponds to that, and then of course we'll get to our uh, guy there. So let's go and take our first input as an R. You entered the key R. The first invisible character that's read by the first dummy is 13, the second one is 10. So let's go over here and see, look, 13 is the carriage return, 
10 is the line feed. So that's proving to you that after the user input those two characters, the integer 13, which is, corresponds to this, and the integer 10, which corresponds to this, those are in the input stream. That's what I'm reading here and tossing away. In this case, I'm putting them to the screen so you can see them. And then I can enter, since I've emptied the buffer, it's waiting now for an input on this third read down here or I should say this last read down there, and then the program continues. Your second key was I. I just wanted to put that in there to kind of prove to you what's going on here. So make sure you understand this. Go do the exercises. It's something that's interesting to know. Even if you never use system.in.read in a real program, it's important for you to understand how the keyboard buffer works. Uh, these invisible ASCII characters and things are things that you're going to um, benefit from going down the road, just learning how computers work, really. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm diving in so deeply into this area.